All right, remember our services this week? A lot of stuff going on, so. Come and enjoy and be a part of. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Appreciate Pastor Charlie filling in for me last week. Brother Butch and worship and so forth. Appreciate that. And, uh, but I just, uh, it was not good. <laughs> Appreciate the, the prayer chain praying. Before I get to my message this morning, <clears throat> boy, I'm really getting tired of this. In fact, yesterday I was chewing gum and, and a cap from one of my molars came off. So once again, I'm making this between me and God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I appreciate your prayers and, and just a quick witness on the situation. I, you know, I had the scope on last Friday and they didn't give me enough pain medication when they were in surgery. And so when I woke up out of surgery, the last dozen surgeries I've had, I've always woke up, you know, for the stent in my side and I've woke up and all was merry. And I'm like, are we done already? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, let's go home. You know, what's going on? Boy, I woke up Friday after that surgery and I was in excruciating pain. Far more pain than even when I did a a full knee replacement on my left knee. And I said, you know, I was just, it was, and I said, you gotta give me more stuff. I'm just, it's hard to describe. I mean, I'm, I'm used now, I know pain. <laughs> and so I said, you gotta give me something more. So she gave me another shot, and then at one point in time, nothing, I was nothing be, being relieved, and then I asked for Dilata. Dilata is that stuff that they give me when I, when my kidneys plug up. They give me that Dilata, and man, I'm talking, Sweet. The colors are awesome. Just everything is wonderful. It didn't touch it. The Delata did not touch it. And I asked her, I said, have you given me the Delata yet that I asked her? She goes, yeah, I just, I just gave it to you a few moments ago. I said, well, it's not working. So then she tried morphine. Then she tried Trinidol or Trinidol or whatever. And then she tried Oxycontin stuff. And this is all intravenous stuff. And then she gave me Percocet. She gave me a half a dozen things. And, and finally she's asking me, you know, is it, What's your pain level now? Well, you know, it's going from off the chart to, and finally down to about a six, six and a half. And you're familiar with those pain levels. That's still, and I said, ma'am, ma'am, what have you given me? She said, I've given you enough stuff to put three elephants to sleep. <laughs> and I said, well, it's just got me down to about a six and a half right now. And, and this, I need to get out of here. So then when I came home, <clears throat> A lot of that stuff began to wear off on my knee. And so then I took a Percocet at home and he gave me a big old thing of it. And, and, and then about a half hour later, I took another one. Well, I, I'm overloaded and now I'm over moody and, and I'm in excruciating pain. And that was about the time I told my wife, I said, call the, call the church. My congregation needs to pray. This something, this is not right. And I began to vomit and I vomited half a dozen times. And, and then I said, you know what? I just thought to myself, this is, this is not right. Okay, my pain then is gonna be somebody else's gain. And the people that I'm most concerned about in my life are my grandchildren. I told Linda, I said, honey, go call the kids right now and tell them to get the grandkids together. Call Michelle, tell Michelle to get Derek and Haley together and Todd and join hands right now and pray that grandpa will be healed. Call Lucas and get Amy and Jordan and Alexa together. Tell them to join hands. And if my grandchildren will pray for my knee, I believe that their childlike faith will heal me. Forget the church. They're clueless. But if my <laughs> grandchildren will pray the prayer of faith, I believe I will be healed. And so she called them and they got together in, you know, in their homes and they prayed. And about 12 o'clock, about midnight, just like that, half the pain, it just gone. It's like you're going 60 miles an hour, you hit the brakes, you go from 60 to 30. And I'm like, hallelujah. And then by three o'clock in the morning, all the pain was gone. The next morning I said, call the kids and tell the grandchildren that God heard their prayers and healed grandpa. And so she did. And I just said, this something is wrong. This is not right. 
So my pain is going to be for somebody else's gain. I want my grandchildren to know that God is real. He hears their prayers and he will heal grandpa. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Turn if you would to the book of Philippians chapter 1. There's a big difference between pain and aching. My knee still aches, but I don't have that pain. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's getting a little better each day, better today than it was yesterday, and we praise God for that. Hallelujah. The title of this message is, This Book is for Me. When I say me, I say you. I say, when I say me, I mean first person. Folks, I want to encourage us to understand once again that, and even as the Holy Spirit was so relevant this morning to speak to us already, and to address us about hearing the voice of God. It's not so much about what the Bible says. It's not so much about what the Bible says, but more about who it is. Yeah. But more about who it is. Yes. It can be extremely frustrating in times, trying to take the promises of God's Word and implement them into a person's life and then experience failure. Folks, once again, as I have said before, it must be about between you and God. If it is about between you and the church, you're going to be disappointed. Amen. If it's about between me and the church, I'm going to be disappointed. If it's about between you and your pastor, you're going to be disappointed. But if we make it about yourself and God, therein lies the mysteries to the kingdom of God, and therein lies the mysteries of the relationship that God wants with us, with himself. Don't get mad at me. Come before God with a boldness. Yes. Yes. Don't get mad at the church. <laughs> Come before God with a boldness. Even just last night, I was reminded of my favorite movie. My favorite movie of all time. Rambo First Blood Part Two. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. It's not a funny thing. <laughs> Rambo first blood part time. And he goes into Vietnam again and he's going to arrest you all, you know, the prisoners and take them. Just take a picture. So he goes in there and he rescues one of them, brings him back, and Murdoch. Remember? Murdoch. Abort! This is abort! Leave Rambo there. Signal, you know, come and get me. And the, and the helicopter pulls away, and that look on his face is like, oh boy, somebody's going to pay for this. <laughs> they take him in prison. They're beating him up and trying to electrocute him and all that kind of stuff. He's tough. He's a tough guy. So finally, they bring in one of the prisoners. Well, maybe if you won't talk for yourself, your own life, maybe you'll talk for his. So they stick that, you know, that heated knife and poke the guy's eye out, and Rambo says, okay. So they get him on the phone. You know, get him on the thing. And so finally they get a hold of Murdoch. Get a hold of, I can't remember now the code name, but he gets a hold of him. And so the colonel back at the CO area says, yeah, John, you know, Rambo. Murdoch comes on and says, Rambo, glad you're alive. Give us your location. We'll come and get you. This is my favorite part of all movies. 
Anybody, you know what movie I'm talking about? See it in your mind, right? Okay. So Rambo, he grips a hold of the microphone. Like this. You know, Murdoch, or the Russian grabs him by the back and says, Say it! Pull it back and say it. You know, we'll kill it right now. Throws his head forward. Rambo grabs him and goes, Murdoch. Yeah, Rambo. Glad you're alive. I'm coming to get you. <laughs> and then it all just goes crazy. <laughs> all just goes, you know, like a galley and the <laughs> just goes crazy. Last night, I was reminded of my favorite movie, and I said, God, I'm coming to get you. God, I'm coming to get you. It's between you and me. Your word, what you say, my relationship with you, I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to touch the hem of your garment. I'm coming to move upon heaven so heaven will move upon us. And God, I'm coming to get you. You see, folks, if a person is hungry for the things of God, they'll be fed. If a person's hungry for the things of God, they'll be fed. But if a person isn't hungry for the things of God, and they should be, they're not hungry for the things of God, and they should be, then that person will complain that they're not being fed. And then we misinterpret good intentions for hunger. We misinterpret good intentions for hunger. You see, I think that it, it's easiest for us to think in good intentions, well, I want all that God has for me. I, I want all that God wants me to have. That, that's good intentions. Doesn't that sound right? I mean, isn't that what we're supposed to say? Isn't that supposed to be how it's about? Yeah, but something's missing. Something's missing. And I'll tell you what's missing. What's missing is, God, I'm coming to get you. God, I'm coming to get you. And let me tell you, you're going to get fed. But good intentions is, well, I want all that God has for me. You know, I believe. I, I believe. I do well. I do good. I tithe. What did the Lord just speak to us already in the Spirit? He said, He is a voice that crieth in the wilderness. Let me tell you something. I think sometimes we need to get to the wilderness. We're just way too comfortable. Way too comfortable. Just about the time I tell God, I don't think I can handle much more. A cat comes off my tooth. And I thought, just great. Okay? And just about the time that I get my knee fixed, now my left kidney's going to plug up, and now that's another time bomb. So you know what? I'm just tired of telling God how to do it. I'm just telling God, I'm coming to get you. And when I get there, whatever you got going on, we're going to be good with it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, because Paul starts out in the book of Philippians, and he says in verse 1, chapter 1, Paul and Timotheus, the servant of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. Folks, this word is not written for just anybody. This word is not for everybody. It's not. The scripture tells us at the cross in the word to those that unbelievers, it is foolishness. But to those of us that believe, it is the power and the strength of Almighty God. And he said, I'm not just writing this to anybody. No. 
to the saints that are at Philippi, and to the deacons and the bishops. Folks, that's me. And that's you. That's not them. They can't have it. If anybody whosoever wants to come and repent of their sins, then they can become a part of the same group. But it's not for them. This is written <laughs> specifically for me. This is my book. 